Thomas and welcome to Men's Matter Bible Study this week. Truly we thank and praise God for this opportunity to come together and we thank and praise God for each of you. If these uh, studies are being a blessing, please share with them with others and, and please let them know about these studies so that we as men can continue to grow in the fullness of what God desires us to be. We want to continue our study in the series uh, about calling and election, making your calling and election sure. And our verse that we're looking at for this series is 2 Peter, the first chapter, verse 10. And I'm reading today from the Amplified Version of God's Word for our study portion on today. And what it says reads as follows. Therefore, believers, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you or election. Be sure that your behavior reflects and confirms your relationship with God. For by doing these things, actively developing these virtues, you will never stumble in your spiritual growth and will live a life that leads others away from sin. God wants us to understand the, the full magnitude of what we've been elected to do. We're in the midst here, we're in springtime, and we're in the midst of primary season as we're heading towards uh, the midterm elections. And it's interesting because every Tuesday night on TV, whether it's uh, my state or other states, their results are coming in. Uh, from the elections that, that, that the states are having. It's, it, it's wild when you look at the acceptance speeches of the individuals that win. Because being the primaries, they've not won the office yet. But what they've won, and I need you to catch this, gentlemen, because this is what we're talking about today. What they've won is they've won the favor of the people. And in winning the favor of the people, they've in essence won the endorsement of the people. The people are saying, yes, we mean you. In other words, we're electing you or we found favor in you. We found a reason to endorse you and to say, yes, we want you to represent us. And many of the tones and tenors of the speeches of these individuals that win, though they may never say it outright, and this is our, our subject for our lesson today, they're saying in the midst of themselves saying, thank you. They're saying, you mean me? And that's the name of our study today, man. You mean me? Last week, we, we, we asked the question, God, did you say something? Because we were talking about the calling dynamic of calling an election. Today, we're talking about the election dynamic. And it's critical to understand, which is why I went to the Amplified version today, gentlemen. It's critical to understand the importance of election and the importance of what God is doing in and through us and with us when we say that we've been elected by God or we're called God's elect. It says in the Amplified again, as it pertains to election. Be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. Be sure that your behavior reflects and confirms your relationship with God. In other words, calling and election. First, remember that God chose you. If you remember nothing else that I say today, remember, gentlemen, God chose you. In the midst of your brokenness, God chose you. In the midst of uh, the shortcomings that you may have, God chose you. In the midst of the struggles that you're facing, God chose you. Every day is not going to be a flowery bed of ease, and we understand that. But what we have to understand even the more, like these individuals in the primary elections whose acceptance speeches I watch, they're all saying the same thing. I, I'm really not worthy. I, I don't deserve your support. I, I thank you for your support. I appreciate your trust in me. I appreciate your confidence in me. That's where we need to be in our prayer time because God has made our election sure. And he desires to make the election sure of us in his realm, in our lives. Because he's already made his mind up. He's propounded the evidence because he created the evidence. He knows what's in each of us because each of us are fearfully and wonderfully made, gentlemen. And what we got to understand is that in the midst of being fearfully and wonderfully made, God desires each of us to use the gifts that we've been given and to stir those gifts up that we've been given to use them for God's greater glory. Because God always has a much bigger plan at play than just each one of us. God is using each of us in the midst of all that he's doing to make a supernatural impact in the earth. And God can't do it unless and until you realize that the answer to the question that you're asking, Lord, you mean me? The answer is an unequivocal yes, I mean you. I mean you and I meant you since the foundation of the world. I mean you and I meant you since I knit you in your mother's womb. I mean you and I meant you since you took your first breath. Since your eyes blinked the first time, since the first beat of your heart took place 13 weeks after conception, I meant you then. I meant you when you seemingly were far away from your calling, your destiny. 
I meant you then, I mean you now, I'll always mean you. Because I, God says, give gifts without repentance. In other words, I'm not sorry that I made you the way that I made you. God's not sorry that he made you the way that he made you, my brother. He's not sorry that he made you the way that he made you. The enemy would love for you to think that you're worthless, but I'm here to let you know that you're worth everything. You're worth so much, John 3.16 says, that the Father sent his Son to die so that you might live. And God wants each of us to live in the fullness, not only of his glory, because he wants us to be clear and accurate reflections of him, but in the fullness of the power, the ability to do that he's placed in our lives based on the gifts and talents and graces that, that he's put in our lives. See, God is not a respecter of person, but what God is, is he's a lover of all people. And God knows exactly what he's doing and he knows exactly how he's sowing into each of us because his greater work and his greater purpose is at play. And that greater work and greater purpose is that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's God's desire. But because each of us have the capacity to choose, many of us make the choice to do something else. If we go back to the election theme and the election example for every election that wins a winner, there are elections where there are losers. And those individuals that lose those elections go through the same motions of thanking and appreciating and, and wow, you put your faith and trust in me, but they have to do something a little bit different. They have to reach out to the victor and do something called concede. Ideally, they make a concession call first. In other words, they call and say, you know what? You really are the best candidate. You really were the better man or better woman this, this evening. And for that, I congratulate you. And ideally, it should be said, and I throw my full support behind you and your agenda. Catch this, gentlemen, because we're on the same team. And even though we have differences, the overriding things that unite us should trump the things that divide us and have us running against one another. In other words, those that concede Make it, the, make it their business to come back to the one that won and say, you know what, I'm sorry for the things that I said about you. I, 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 I turn my heart towards you and I throw my support behind you and everyone that's with me. I ask them to support you. If we look at that scripturally, that's basically repentance. And God desires us when we're outside of the ark of safety, when we're outside of where God desires us to be, when we're outside of God's will for our lives. When he begins to move and we see that what we sought to elect was wrong, we then go to God and say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord, I missed it. Forgive me, Lord, I messed up. Forgive me, Lord, I've blown it. And even though I've blown it, the fact that I can still come to you and say, Lord, I'm sorry, please use me. And he'll choose to use me. And it leaves us scratching our head. You mean me, Lord? Even though I railed against you, even though I, I, I did all this stuff to try to drive people away from you, you still desire to use me because God's love is gracious and because his love is unconditional. Yes, I still desire to use you. I give gifts without repentance. My desire is for you to be on the winning team. My desire is for you to be victorious. I want you to be victorious, husband. I want you to be a victorious father. I want you to be a victorious pillar in your community. And you can only do that once you align yourself with me and my agenda. Gentlemen, God is calling us in this season to make every day a super day. Whether it's a Sunday, whether it's a Friday, whether it's a Wednesday, whether it's a Saturday, it should be a super Sunday or Friday or Wednesday or Saturday, just like Super Tuesdays. It should be a day where we make up our minds after weighing the cost to say yes to Jesus, to say yes to his will, to say yes to his way, to say yes to his work, to say yes to the gifts and talents that God has put into each of us. Because it's not about us. I'm here to let you know, brothers, it's not about us. But it's about God. Because if we look at it again, look again at the characteristics in the Amplified of what election is. It, 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 again, it says, be sure that your behavior reflects and confirms your relationship with God. Reflects and confirms. Let's unpack those two things before we go. It reflects God. It reflects the fact that we have a relationship with God. We've all stood in front of a mirror before. 
And I know that me personally, I, I stood in front of a mirror and I'm like, man, I look really, really good. I think I look really, really good. And when I get in front of the mirror, I realize that there's an imperfection. Maybe I didn't iron my shirt right. Maybe my tie is not lying just as it should. Maybe my my, my uh, uh, posy and my lapel is not, is too high or something like that. The mirror, what it does, it gives us a clear and accurate reflection of ourselves in that instant. An unmistakable reflection of ourselves. Catch this. That not allows us to get caught up in how good we look, but affords us the opportunity to correct those areas that need work so that we can make the best overall representation of the God that we serve. And God wants us to be mindful that as we continue to look in the mirror of his perfect law of liberty, that the reflection that we present to the earth is a clear and accurate reflection of who God is, which means God's constantly pulling us into his word so that we can be corrected, we can be rebuked, we can be reproved, we can be straightened out, we can be cleaned up. It's not to beat us up, but it goes on as I, as I paraphrase that scripture so that the man of God, man or woman of God might be found as perfect or mature and complete and lack of nothing. The very best version of ourselves we can possibly be to present to those that God has called us to serve. So Lord's like, you mean me? You, you really want me to be all that? Yes, God wants you, my brother, to be all that. He wants you to be a clear and accurate reflection of him in the lives of others. He wants you to carry the bloodstained banner and to help people see God's mercy on display. Help people see God's peace on display. Help people see God's joy on display. Help people see God's forgiveness on display. Help people see God on display. This is what he's calling us to do. This is what he's calling us to do, brothers. This is what he needs us to do. This is what we were created to do. We go all the way back to Genesis. We talked about it in one of our first studies together. We were created to have dominion. We were created to run things and to have dominion, to walk like God, think like God, talk like God, act like God, not be God, but act like God in this realm. Walk in that same mindset and the sin that pulled us away from being the exact replica of God that we were created to be. But God has given us an avenue through salvation to get back to that, through salvation and redemption, to get back to what he's called us to be, that clear and accurate reflection of him. That's what God is calling us to be in these last and evil days. And not only a reflection, he's calling us to, 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 to uh, uh, um, be a confirmation. He wants to make sure that our behavior reflects and confirms our relationship with God. See, when something is confirmed, that means a couple of things. When I get a confirmation text or a confirmation email or a confirmation call for something that I've set be it a, a dinner reservation for my wife and I, an appointment for one of my children, an appointment for myself, whatever it might be. Number one, it entails that I've identified a need and I've set a designated time to get that need met. And number two, I'm making sure that it's understood by everybody around me, specifically those that are involved with said need, that that time is made and that we're actually going to be there. And see, when we confirm that we have a relationship with God, what's happening is just like people from the outside are calling me or texting me or emailing me, people on the outside that don't know God are going to come to you. They're going to come to your brothers and they're going to ask you, hey man, wh why are you happy when everybody else around is sad? Or, or why do you have a smile on your face and everybody else is walking around with a scowl? Or, or, or how come you have hope when it seems that this is a hopeless situation? In other words, what they're doing is they're asking, you know what, let me, let me just confirm, are you actually doing this because of the God that you serve? And every time that we get those questions, we should have a ready word, not to give ourselves glory. This ain't about patting ourselves on the back. This is about giving God glory. This is about telling people that I look to the hills from what's come as my help. And my help comes from the Lord. This is about us saying, gentlemen, that, that the Lord is my, my, my shelter. The Lord is my shade on my right hand. 
the Lord is the one that brings me through this from this time forth and forevermore. In other words, I'm confirming to you with my words as well as my actions that this is not about me. This is about God. This is the greater one that lives on the inside of me. This is the God in me that's doing these things. This is the God in me that has me in this position. This is the God in me that's keeping my wife and, and keeping my family and keeping my career and making me a pillar of the community. It's nothing that I've done other than saying yes to God and making sure that my election is in lockstep, making sure that when I hear God say yes, when I ask the question, God, you mean me? And he says, yes, okay, and I'm going to make sure that everything I have and everyone associated with me is going to line up with your will, God. God is calling us today, gentlemen, to answer the question of you mean me. Answer God's yes with positive action. God wants us to be about his business. God wants us to be about doing what it is that he's called us to do. And we do that so that we can win souls for the kingdom, as it says in the balance of this verse, as we close out. By doing these things, by actively develop, de developing these virtues, you will never stumble in your spiritual growth and will live a life that leads others away from sin. So when we're a clear reflection, and we show people how good God is. And when we're clear with our confirmation, when we're clear that we let people know that, yeah, God, God elected me. And because God elected me, I would encourage you to throw all of your support, not behind me, but behind God. Because when you throw all of your support behind God and you let God be God in your life, what's going to happen, like it says here, you'll never stumble in your spiritual growth. And you'll live a life that leads others away from sin. Your life will then become a, 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 a spirit magnet. A soul magnet that's drawing people towards Christ. And then that's when we become adept at planting and watering. Because the word says that one man plants, another man waters. But ultimately God provides the increase. God is calling you and I, my brothers, to be adept at planting and watering. He wants us to get good at it. And as we get good at it, and as we really grow in it, God is going to use us to make a supernatural difference. God is going to use us to, to ultimately win souls for the kingdom. God is going to use us, use us to bring these individuals into his presence that he might do the changing. All God wants us to do is be fishers of men and be willing to lift his name up. And as we lift his name up, God said, I'll draw all men unto me. Through Jesus Christ, he said it. So if you're here today and you're asking God, you mean me? You, you really mean me. And you're having a hard time believing it? I want you to pray this prayer with me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I come before you a sinner. I come before you in awe of the fact that you would even consider Desiring to use a wretch like me. But you said in your word, Lord God, that the playing field is even. Because if I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And believe in my heart that God you raised him from the dead. That I shall be saved. So I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I believe in my heart, God. That you raised him from the dead. Because I do these things in faith Lord. I throw my support behind you. I turn away from my sin. And I embrace your salvation. Thank you Lord Jesus for saving me. Thank you Father God for making provision. Thank you Holy Spirit for filling me with your power. Thank you Lord. For using me. To make a difference. In the lives of others. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you to the household of faith. And I want to welcome you as a fellow Kingsman. We're going to find out how you can get in touch with us in just a moment. And I really want to hear from you guys. I want to want to pray with you. I want to encourage you. I, I, I want us to continue to grow uh, as a fellowship and grow as, as, as a ministry. And, and the key thing that you need to do now is just find a church home. If you don't have a church home, 
please become a member of our Living Witness Ministries e-family. You're going to see how to get in touch with us in just a moment. Please make sure you email us. Please make sure you reach out. We, we, we love to fellowship with you and grow together so that we can truly become God's great army. And he's calling his, in these last and evil days. Until next time, this is Pastor Derek Thomas encouraging you gentlemen to continue to answer your calling and to continue to walk boldly in your election because yes, God did choose and mean you. God bless. Living Witness Ministries is a church on the move dedicated to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through the preached and taught word, community activism and outreach, and practical ministry designed to meet needs, bless hearts, save souls, and change lives. You can sow into the ministry via our cash app at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. That's dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. Sow your seed into the good works and good ground of Living Witness Ministries today. And thank you for helping us reach the world with the life giving way. We pray that you were blessed by today's broadcast and would love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, or would like to learn more about Living Witness Ministries, you can contact us by email at livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two, witness at gmail.com or by phone at area code 404-955-8846. Again, that's area code 404-955-8846. Until next time, we encourage you to continue to live your life as a living witness. Oh,